So, this is going to be the last lecture in the series on connectivity for IIoT. So, here basically I am going to give you a demo of the Zigbee. So, before I do so, let me just try to go through some of these basics of uh, uh, Zigbee, how it works and how you can configure Zigbee for working and thereafter I am going to show you this Zigbee uh, in uh, Zigbee communication in action. So, basically we will have a Zigbee transmitter and a Zigbee receiver and I am going to show you how this transmitter sends uh, and the receiver receives and uh, basically shows the sent information from the transmitter. So, uh, for Zigbee connectivity, the basic connectivity model uh, that will be used uh, for data transfer between the Zigbee, mod uh, Zigbee modules is discussed and particularly we are using uh, the XB uh, for doing it. And uh, basically uh, we are going to focus over here uh, this XB uh, which is basically also pronounced as Zigbee, but is a product uh, from one of these companies a, sp a specific company specific product which follows the Zigbee protocol. This uh, XB module and its configuration uh, I am going to show and uh, thereafter I am going to introduce the basic communication between two XB modules using Python programming language that I am going to do next. So, just a recap. Uh, Zigbee is a communication protocol uh, that is used for mid-range communication and it's, uh, it follows uh, the specification uh, of IEEE 802.15.4 uh, and uh, it is one of the very well known protocols for IoT uh, for whether it is for home based applications or for industry based applications Zigbee is a very popular technology. And it is very popular for low data rate, low power communication in wireless personal area networks. There are different uh, topologies that are supported by Zigbee, uh, star topology, tree topology and uh, mesh topology, particularly the star and the mesh topologies are the most common and are widely used for home and industrial automation applications. The communication range in Zigbee varies from 10 to 100 meters, it becomes more if the the receiver and the transmitter are in the line of sight of each other. So, a Zigbee module uh, uh, basically can be of three types, there can be a coordinator, a router and an end device. The coordinator is the root of the network and it acts as the bridge between these different networks. The router basically relays the information to other nodes in the network and the end devices are only responsible to connect to the parent node and no relaying of information is done by the end devices. So, these are the three different types of devices that are supported by Zigbee. So, Zigbee and XB although these terms are used interchangeably, but they are different. So, Zigbee protocol is a mesh communication protocol which is based on IEEE 802.15.4 standard specifications whereas, XB is a product from this uh, from the company Digi and it comes in different variants. It is available commercially in different variants. So, Digi Mesh is a protocol that basically basically is similar to Zigbee, but has certain uh, you know additional features. So, Digi Mesh is basically supported by XB and it has certain uh, features that are similar to Zigbee, but certain additional desirable features are also there in Digi Mesh. So, these are the prerequisites initially you have to install the XB library using this command pip install XB and then install the XCTU software from this particular link that is given. So, you can click on this particular link and uh, you know you would be taken to that. So, from this link you would be able to uh, get uh, uh, the download and the installation of this software XCTU and that is required to be installed even uh, you know before you can do this configuration. So, XCTU will be used to configure the XP modules before they can be used for communication that means the Zigbee sender and the transmitters could be used. So, for configuration uh, you know after you have installed XCTU you open the XCTU window uh, like this and then you click on the discover button uh, to discover the XB. So, uh, basically uh, you know so once you do that 
you would be able to add the different devices and discover devices. For adding devices, this is the button that you will be using and for discovering, uh, this is basically the button that you are going to use, use. So, you know once you click on this particular button, it has discovered different modules and this is this module that has been uh, discovered and has been found. So, there could be many different other modules that could be discovered through this discovery process. So, after discovering the dis devices, it is required to identify the port ID and the MAC address of the XB devices. And this port ID and the MAC ID are required for this communication and this is quite obvious. And here as you can see based on these different devices that are discovered, the corresponding port ID and the MAC ID will have to be uh, assigned, uh, will have to be found out and the names of these devices will also have to be assigned. And uh, so here the names are node 1 and node 3, but you could change, you could over here, you could change the names of these devices. So, uh, in that for the transmitter program uh, for XB, uh, this is uh, basically a screenshot uh, for the transmitter. Um, this part basically talks about importing the DGMesh library, this is the DGMesh library. The sender port ID is sent, uh, is set basically through this particular uh, command line and for the destination address, um, uh, this destination address is set uh, through this particular line of code uh, in Python and the, the default, uh, default target is, uh, is the broadcast mode of communication. Uh, this is the receiver side program. Uh, again, you import the DGMesh and uh, because this DGMesh library is the, the, the backbone, the, the enabler for supporting this communication. So, it is very important to Im import for the transmitter as well as the receiver XB modules. It is, import, it is important uh, to import this DGMesh library. And then the port is set, the receiver port ID is set over here and this try, try block if you look at. Uh, it is looking for, uh, it is waiting for the receiving of the data from the, that is sent from the sender. So, it is waiting for reading the frame and uh, so this is basically this block and this is the python code and uh, so output console for the transmitter is going to look like this. So, you can enter the message that you want to send from the transmitter. Let us say that we type in welcome to IIoT course and uh, then at the receiver, uh, you know you are going to receive this message welcome to IIoT uh, course and U stands for Unicode and uh, so let us not worry about it and this is basically this message that is received at the receiver end. So, with this we come to an end of this particular lecture. We have seen uh, the, uh, the configuration of Zigbee and th the sender and the transmitter module configuration, their corresponding code and uh, how the data can be sent from the transmitter to the receiver. So, now I am going to show you whatever I have explained so far the XCTU configuration and also this uh, Python code for the Zigbee transmitter and the receiver, I am going to show it in action. So, um, as you can see over here, we have these two Zigbee modules. Uh, this one uh, is the transmitter Zigbee module and this is the receiver Zigbee module which have been con connected to the laptop because Zigbee modules can connect over USB. So, for convenience we have connected over laptop. So, uh, this is the transmitter module and this is the receiver module and we will show that how this communication is taking place. Right. So, we have already uh, written the code uh, that will be required uh, for it, uh, but before that let me show you, uh, let me show you this uh, XCTU uh, uh, configuration window. So, this is basically this uh, XCTU configuration window and if you recall that uh, you know in the slide I had shown you that you will have to first configure these different nodes uh, regarding which port they are going to work, which one will be the sender port, which will be the receiver port, what will be the names of these different nodes, the MAC IDs and all these things will have to be configured. Many other configura configurations you can do, but those can be done in the XCTU configuration uh, screen. So, after you have done that, uh, basically uh, you know uh, you can then transmit the data uh, and then also receive it. So, this is basically the receiver code uh, in Python, uh, we have this receiver code uh, receiver xb.py uh, and uh, this is basically you know there is a while loop trying to read the data frame as I was showing you in the slide earlier and it is trying to look for whether any there is any data that has been sent. And this is this imported DGMesh uh, library 
uh, this is required as I told you already and um, so let us uh, execute this one over here and uh, thereafter let us go to the other code which is the sender xb uh, uh, dot pi uh, this is the other code here also we have imported the dgmesh library and we have set the port etc etc and also we try to uh, you know uh, form this message that is going to be sent uh, this message is sent through this command send ser MES, msg and msg is this message that is built and is being sent so after this we uh, go to this console to see that uh, you know how it looks like from the sender side so that was the receiver one and this is the sender console so we uh, execute over here uh, we run and we send a message uh, so we can type in any message let us say uh, hello uh, world uh, hello world and uh, then we send it so it is being sent from the transmitter side so we send it and we go back and we can see whether it has been received or not so as we can see over here it has been received hello world has been received at the 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 receiver side right so this is the receiver console and that was the sender console so from the sender console it was sent and from the receiver console we are able to receive this so you can try it out yourselves and see whether things are uh, working for you or not it is very simple and uh, there are a lot of open source code available for supporting zigbee uh, programming and so on uh, particularly with python and you can try out this particular setup that i have uh, demoed you uh, today so these are these references that you could go through and uh, you know if you are interested you could, could go through any of these references and i would encourage you to uh, try out uh, this particular setup uh, that i have just explained and try to send some data from the transmitter and see whether it has been correctly received at the receiver or not because that is the basic building block for zigbee communication Thank you.